And what's up, everybody? It's Joey Bags. Welcome if you're first time here. Welcome back if you are one of my longtime viewers. So, today's video. Now, this is going to be the third time I record this video just because it's me. It's me, and of course, it's Friday night. You know, my previous videos, that background car sounds, wow, they sound great, were way too loud. So, hopefully, third time is the charm. I got this set. Uh, let's get right into the gameplay. I'm in AMS 2, and, oh, let's get that sorted out. Oh, well, that's super loud. Let's hide this interface. So, I am in AMS 2, and I am at Monza. I'm racing in the McLaren 720S. It is a normal race, 30-plus cars. I did the update to AMS 2, and it defaulted. I don't like this many cars, but whatever. Uh, I end up starting in the back, I think in 33rd, 32nd, 33rd place, and by the end of the race, I make it to 16th place. Um, I've got this view here where you're going to kind of see all different kind of views. Um, off jump, I want to say thank you so much to tnuts.com. Not a sponsored video, no affiliation with them other than being a customer, but I was able to, I mean, I'll put in a picture. Uh, the wheel deck that I'm currently using that I adapted to my Next Level Racing Challenge rig. And shout out to Next Level Racing also. Love you guys. Um, I made this wheel deck using some uh, 10 series. That's the, you know, one inch uh, aluminum extrusion. But I got a two by four piece. So, you know, two by four inches. Um, super sturdy. And I was able to make the wheel deck. So that way I can move my different direct drives off and on very quickly. Uh, not have to futz around with it much. I now have the GT DD Pro from Fanatec on the rig. And it's a, it's a hefty heifer. So that's kind of why I wanted to have it here. The Challenger rig is a great entry level rig. But it's a center post design. I think I talked about this in another video. Uh, it does, it's not very conducive for a lot of rigidity, especially a higher torque, heavier motor like the GTDD Pro or even my PXN. So I kind of wanted to beef it up a little bit, and that's why I got this custom. So shout out to tnuts.com, shout out to Next Low Racing. Um, you know, they're not sponsors. I just I bought their stuff and I like it, so I want to give a shout out to them. Today's video is going to be my favorite subject and you guys' favorite subject, Fan Attack. Or Fan Shambles or Shamble Tech, I think I saw somebody call it on uh, Reddit. So let's get into this. Um, if you were if you're into sim racing, and most of you are, you saw that today Fanatech decided to drop a new bundle. At noon, I think it was around noonish, I got the tweet on my phone while I'm working. Fanatec drops a new bundle, the DD Extreme, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "Huh?" I, you know, their announcements were last year were the QR2, the DD, the Club Sport DD, and the Club Sport DD Plus. Uh, 12 newton meter on the club sport dd 15 newton meter on the club sport dd plus the club sport dd plus is playstation compatible you know they announced that they announced the sparkle rally wheel box that was pretty much about it then they had their black friday deal the black friday debacle the end of the year debacle you know from november december january shipping delays shipping issues uh, communication issues, service issues, you name an issue, Fanatec had it. But today they drop a new bundle. What the fuck? You still haven't delivered all of your products from Black Friday. Plenty of people are in my comment section to share their stories. Plenty of people are still on the Fanatec forums, on the Fanatec subreddit, sharing their stories, you know. What the hell? super tone deaf you know you've got people clamoring you've got people you know commenting in your shorts on youtube on your instagram videos and instagram posts you know you've got tons of people still complaining hey haven't gotten an email hey what's my tracking number hey where's my stuff hey where's my refund
but you're dropping another bundle? Whatever. We're going to get into this. The videos that went live of the reviews today. I'm going to get into that one, too. Um, uh, what I will say is the same people that dropped videos today were the same people that didn't say anything while the issues were happening. They kept their mouth shut, so that's very telling. Um, I can understand it, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, yeah, today was just... You know, if you're not into the, if you're not into sim racing, or and you're really not into the Fanatec ecosystem, or you know, you don't have any dealings with Fanatec, today was just a normal, regular day for you. Like whatever. If you're one of the many, many, many people that are still waiting on either a product from Fanatec, or a refund from Fanatec, or a service email from Fanatec. You know, you can kind of be what the fuck Fanatec. You, okay, you're dropping a new product, but I still haven't gotten mine. This was extremely tone deaf by Fanatec's, you know, on Fanatec's part. You've got all these, you know, you've got these issues and you're dropping another bundle. Now, I'm going to tell you off jump. Me, myself, personally, it's, good, it's super petty. And I'm super salty. I'm not going to say I'm pissed. I'm not going to say I'm, you know. I'm just salty as fuck. The reason I'm salty as fuck is because that fucking DD Extreme bundle looks cool as shit. That fucking wheel looks awesome. You know, we'll get into that. I'll roll in the picture of the wheel. Or of the, the, of the bundle. So the bundle consists of their Club Sport DD Plus 15 Newton Meter PlayStation Compatible wheelbase with that wheelbase they have a polyphony designed well polyphony in conjunction with fanatec i think polyphony did all the work designed 13 inch 300 no not 13 inch 13 centimeter 300 millimeter wheel it is a now round wheel not d-shaped it is i believe fanatec says it's leather wrapped I think it's like right on their splash page too, you know. Yeah, like the first thing that you, when you go to fanatech.com is there. Um, let's see the description. Uh huh. Design with polyphony. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Bullshit. I'll read this for you for you guys. Just I want to see if I get to the part where it says what the realistic. Oh, should I say? Premium vegan leather. Bullshit. There's no such thing as vegan leather. That's final. How do I know this? My other hobby is car detailing. And I have detailed quite a few Teslas. With vegan leather interiors. Pleather. It's pleather. Vinyl. Yeah, I'm being petty. It's vinyl. So. You have this 13 centimeter. Probably like close to 13 inches or so. Wheel. 300 millimeters it's faux leather wrapped it's got some cushioning to the reviews i have watched i'm not going to really you know shout those reviews out uh it's leather wrapped it's got some cushioning so it gives a little give quite honestly i like i've got my gtdd pro wheel in front of me so if you see me grabbing stuff and looking down because you know they're designed pretty much the same uh i like the i like the hard rubber feel of this wheel I do like the fact that it's bigger on the new wheel and it's round, not D-shaped. It has a larger button box, well, hence a bigger wheel, larger button box. It has, the face of it looks pretty much identical to the GTDD Pro, just upsized. Same LNR flat buttons, same share option and PlayStation button, the same four buttons with up and down and push-ins, but now the actual button cap is um i think it's aluminum i watched one review that said he saw a set screw in it so that's what leads him to believe it's metal um it has four paddles in the back uh i believe they're all magnetic uh, you know what i can take a quick look here and see if that mentions that real quick i know okay so i believe the top two shift paddles 
are magnetic because I'm looking here and I see the neo uh, the neodymium magnets on the top shift pedals, but I don't see it on uh, on the top shift paddles, but I don't see them on the lower two paddles. So it's got shift paddles and what I'm going to guess is probably dual clutch paddles. So you've got a four paddle design. It's a much beefier button box. Quite honestly, when I'm looking at it, the design of the button box looks very similar to a actual car's horn, you know, that center section where they encapsulate the horn and the airbag and how that leads into the uh, the column. It actually is very reminiscent of that. That's actually kind of cool to have that little thing there. The face looks the same for the, for the most part. It just looks a little zhuzhed up. It looks um, a little higher end. It does have a much larger screen on the wheel now that actually shows telemetry. So one of the reviews I saw, uh, it was outputting, you know, various different options, uh, you know, different various different points of telemetry, uh, tire temp and some other stuff. And it's also usable in other sims. So they use it on Gran Turismo first and then they use it in some other sims and it was transferring telemetry. So that's kind of cool. All in all, the wheel looks fucking cool. It really does. I hate Fanatec. Oh, okay, I won't hate it. I don't hate Fanatec. I have disdain for Fanatec. I have disdain for Fanatec for what they did to me. If you want to say it's petty, first world problems, I don't care. Just go ahead. Go into the comment section. Type out whatever you want so I can ignore it. What they've done to other consumers, what they're still doing to other consumers. You know, they had, they had the debacle with the DD Plus pre-order where they had no hard date. They announced these they announced these direct drives back in like October. They opened the pre-orders. They never gave a full hard date for the DD Plus, which is PlayStation compatible, because they didn't have a green light from Sony. They drug it out the whole time, never saying they didn't have a green light from Sony. So essentially, they just strung everybody along that just assumed they had the green light from Sony. Then when the date comes that they were supposed to start shipping, it gets pushed back. And it gets pushed back again. And why is that? Because Sony hasn't given them the green light. Oh, how nice. That's how you handle a pre-order. So there's that issue. We go through the holiday season. They fuck up a bunch of things. They fuck up the orders. They fuck up service. They fuck up pre-orders. They're getting complaints out of the ass. You know. But the SimTuber community is rather quiet. Not many videos, of, actually no videos were made of the issues. I made videos and I'm a nobody. I have 300 and I think 60 something subs. Maybe 360, 363, 366, something like that. I'm a nobody. I made four videos about it. You know, I'm standing up for the little guy. I'm standing up for me. You know, there's no reason I buy something from your website. Uh, my order is processed and you take my thousand plus dollars. Like this, like this, you take it, you know, you let me know, Hey, we took your money. We're processing your order. And then three weeks go by and not a freaking word, you know, it's up in limbo completely. Now, if I was waiting on any of this as a gift for a family member, for one of my kids, I would have been a bit upset you because it wasn't going to come time for Christmas. There were plenty of people that were in that situation. There were plenty of people that spent way more money than I did who were in that situation. And while some people want to come in high and mighty and say, oh, that's a first world problem. Or, oh, you should have planned accordingly. Or, oh, it's the holiday season. Nah, bro. Nope. I'm sorry. You know, I've ordered from plenty of places online. You know, high-end stores, boutique places, places that n are not as large as Fanatec. Very small. And they were able to get my stuff to me on time. Shit, I ordered from freaking AliExpress from China. And I got my shit within a week or two. With emails all along the way to let me know where my pa where my packages were in the process, okay. And yeah, you might say, oh, but it's AliExpress. It's big, yeah. But I'm dealing with AliExpress as the main store. I'm dealing with the individual seller that's selling on AliExpress. You know, so come on, nah, that's bullshit. All right, so we're gonna get deeper into this. So they go ahead and they have all that shit. They hold back on the dates. People are still putting down that $1,000 pre-order, but they're getting strung along on the date. 
So now you have people finally like, hey, what the fuck? The clamoring is coming, you know, a lot louder now. Because at this point, people are just straight calling up Fanatec a scam. They're calling them scam attack. Why? Because they're taking the money, they're taking the thousand dollars for the pre-order, and they're not even giving you a date on when it, you know, comes about. They're not even saying anything. So the whole time that their system was down during Black Friday or when they had issues, they didn't send out an email. When they started overselling things because uh, they had glitches with their system, they didn't send out emails. You want to know when they sent out an email? When their system glitched and the Black Friday sale price that they had on the Formula 2.5X wheel, the system glitched and gave people an extra discount if they happened to have that wheel with the paddle module in their same order. You know what they did? Quickly they saw that issue canceled those orders then sent out an email to tell their customers that bought it that you know it was um what was the term they used um that it was uh <coughs> that they were purchased in bad faith the transaction happened in bad faith <coughs> and because the purchase happened in bad faith and the consumer exploited their system they were canceling the order fuck you bro if you programmed your system to make a boo-boo like that and people happen to get, you know, get an extra discount because you messed up. How dare you say that we're exploiting the system or we're acting in bad faith? Nah, bro. So they were quick to send out that fucking email. But did they send out an email, you know, to let me know, hey, I'm sorry that, you know, we've held on to your money for, you know, three weeks. And we haven't let you know what, you know, where your item is. God, no, you know, it's happening, you know. Did you even have my order? Did your system glitch, process the order, and then not continue forward? Because even now, my order still says processing to warehouse or whatever the fuck it is they, they call it. My order still says that. It doesn't say delivered. It still says, you know, processing to warehouse. So, you know, what the fuck? You know, and I'm not the only one. And there were tons of people that had the same issue. There are tons of people that are still waiting to this day, February 9th. 2024 that ordered for during black friday november 27th of 2023 that still haven't gotten their stuff you have people that ordered in december that still haven't gotten their stuff you've got people that ordered in january the beginning of january that haven't gotten their stuff now there's some that have apparently slipped through the cracks and actually been ordered and delivered on time you know a few and those people are super vocal on uh, online to, you know, kind of say, hey, look, I ordered my stuff and I got it in time. Well, guess what? You're the exception. You are the outlier because the bulk of it, a lot of people haven't. You know, I don't think that the outliers are the people that haven't gotten anything. You know, maybe slowly as we've gotten into February, that, di that has changed and maybe those people have now become the outlier. But if we look back a few weeks, a month to a few weeks, that wasn't the case. So they did all this. They did the, the issue with the pre-order of the Club Sport DD and the Club Sport DD Plus. They didn't give a hard date on the DD Plus. And people were putting down money because they're like, ah, the DD is cool and all, but it's 12 newton meters and it's PlayStation and Xbox compatible. Is it really that much of an... Even some of the reviews were kind of lukewarm. It's like... It's only four newton meters more than, an, uh, you know, only four newton meters more than a Club Sport DD with the boost kit to take it to eight. It's really not that much of an upgrade. It really isn't. Um, yeah, it's 12 newton meters constant torque, as they like to say. And, you know, that front hub where the QR2 is attached to is a lot shorter, which that I will say is rather nice. And it has true force, their new tech. None of the sims are enabling True Force. There's no, uh, um, there's no integration yet into any of the sims to activate True Force. So that's a moot point right there. It's really not that big of a deal. So people are kind of like lukewarm to it. Now the DD Plus, that's 15 newton meters, that kicks it up a notch. That takes it to mid range. Now that has people excited, you know, because what do people want? More torque, more newton meters. You know, that equates to better road feel, better definition, better details. And, you know, quite honestly, it's an improvement. 
you know, I would go with doubling my torque from 8 newton meters to 15. I mean, uh, maybe a little bit less than doubling, but, you know, 1 newton meter or whatever. You know, but going from 8 max to now 15, that's kind of an attractive offer. Um, the price, eh, at $1,000, you've got to pay that premium, that, that Sony tax. So, you know, to get the Sony approval, I mean, a th I think the CSDD is $700. The DD Plus is nine is thousand dollars, so that three hundred dollar price tag it's a little steep, but it's fifteen newton meters. You know, yeah, it's three more, but it's definitely you know it's seven more than the CSL DD. So, hey, you know what? It's not bad. Um, that's a bit more of an upgrade. So you've got people that are plunking down the thousand dollars for that. How freaking toned that if you know are you that you got people waiting? Now you announce this new bundle. Now the reason I'm salty as fuck is because if I would have known this DD Extreme bundle was coming out, I would not have bought the GT DD Pro. We're now going to go back to the Kirith interview with Thomas, whatever, whatever CEO of Fanatec. Shout out to Kirith. Every time I mention this, I will say shout out to Kirith. The video, the, the interview was very lackluster. Um, I, he had some points, uh, very few, one or two, um, very s few points that I agreed with or was happy that they're going to move in the right direction. You can look at my video on that one that I did that Sunday that came out and everything you'll need to know is right there. The part that stuck out to me most was toward the end of the interview when uh, Kirith, shout out was um, asking questions about the pre-order, about the DD Plus pre-order. And if there was anything that he would change, and he said that he wouldn't, that the way they handled everything was correct, which is arrogant as fuck, and if that's what you want to believe, should go ahead, but you were wrong. Um, <clears throat> and as they talked a little bit more, he did reflect and did say, you know what, in hindsight, maybe I would have changed something. And maybe I would have changed the buffer time from, you know, when we announced the DD Plus, you know, for pre-order <clears throat> from the DD. And it was like, oh, okay, you know, that may have maybe curbed some issues. He then goes to kind of refute that point in a way. He kind of, you know, was like, oh, I may have done this, but the reason we did this, so a uh, but, uh, you know, I did this, but... He then it goes on to explain how uh, the race is over. I came in 16th place, but I did have some good uh, moments there. The load cell pedal is great. I freaking love this thing. So back to the interview. <clears throat> this is just going to loop again. So uh, he says, you know, yes, but when we announced the CSL DD all those years ago, you know, we waited to announce the GTDD Pro. When we did announce the GTDD Pro, we had so much pushback from the community because, you know, they were like, oh, if we knew if we knew you were going to announce the GTDD Pro, which was going to be PlayStation compatible and, you know, whatever improvements they made over, I don't think there's really anything. He's like, oh, people would have waited for the GTDD Pro to order it. So maybe I would have put more of a buffer to, you know, between announcing the DD and the DD Plus. Bro, how are you going to say that and then do the same bullshit again? Because that's what you did. So you announced the CSDD and Attic 2029. And that was in October. So around the same time, you mentioned the DD Plus, which is going to be PlayStation compatible, 15 newton meters. That's an upgrade. That's like, oh, okay. You don't put a hard date. You're able to meet the date for the DD, the Club Sport DD, because you don't have to wait on licensing, which you never said from the beginning. Had you mentioned that from October, like, oh, we have the DD and the DD Plus, and then under the DD Plus put pending Sony approval, and then open the pre-order, at least people would have known ahead of time, and they could have either waited or then understood, still pre-ordered if they wanted, they wouldn't have complained about it. Why? Because at that point, they would have known, oh, it's still pending Sony approval. Not to string them along oh it's going to be released at this time oh i'm sorry we're going to have to <clears throat> hold back because and then for some bullshit fetitious reasons oh you know we didn't get it on time or 
you know, there's still an issue, blah, 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 and I say what the issue is, which is really we're waiting on Sony, then finally, after people have already inundated you with comments online, via email, you finally break down and say, oh, you know, it was because we're still waiting on Sony, but it'll be any day now, any day now, you know, Sony will say, okay. This whole time, they could have also announced the DD Extreme bundle, but they pulled a fucking nasty ash cash grab and didn't announce the DD Plus, which I don't get. That's the same people that paid for the DD Plus, I'm pretty freaking sure, would have paid the 300 extra dollars to get the DD Extreme bundle. Like, I don't get it. Like, if this is the case where you're saying, oh, you waited before, that was a, f that was a fucking bad time to wait. Because had I known that DD Extreme bundle was coming out, I would not have copped the GT DD Pro. I would have waited. Whatever. That's my salt. So, you string people along. You don't tell them. You don't tell them because it's, it's, you're waiting on Sony. Fine. Whatever. You go ahead. You finally get the Sony approval. You know, it's not put out there as loudly as you would imagine it would. Um, you've got people that are then showing, oh, I got a shipping email that, you know, my DD Plus is coming. Great. At least, you know, you're now communicating with the company with the community you're communicating with the customers that bought it and the first dd pluses start to ship and show up and i'm sure those people are ecstatic and you know what i would be too like oh this is so cool days from having people get their dd pluses delivered you know and they spent all this money on all you know the dd plus and then this wheel and the pedals and blah 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 and then you announce that dd extreme bundle that's already shipping i can order it right now and get it in four days allegedly i would be so pissed if i plunked down the grand on that dd plus to then see this bundle i would i'm like i would have paid the 300 extra bucks to get that wheel why a the wheel looks cool i am a polyphony sony gran turismo diehard I have played all the Gran Turismos from the very first one. I love Gran Turismo. So to get a wheel that was, you know, designed by, Poly I mean, that's, you know, why I got the GTDD Pro to go with my PlayStation 5. Why? Because I love Gran Turismo that much. You know, so I would have paid the 300 extra bucks to get the new wheel. And what kills me is that you can't even buy the wheel separately directly from them because of the licensing deal that they have with Polyphony and Sony. So, once again, the consumer gets shafted by Fanatec. Um, what they said during, their, during his interview was bull. Um, the story that he told, reinforced by the bullshit that they pulled with this... And then today, all the videos that dropped as soon as the embargo lifted, I think it was around noon. I think that was the time that I saw that tweet. Um, and now to address that, all the usual suspects dropped the videos today. I'm not going to name names. There's no reason to shame and name. Um, I'm not even, you know, tossing shade to them. You know, I'm a nobody. You know, in the sim racing YouTuber space, I am literally a nobody my 366 subs pales in comparison to the thousands and hundreds of thousands of subs that some of these people have i'm the if i were to make an analogy if we were at a concert they are on stage and i'm somebody in the nosebleed section saying fanatec sucks while they're there reviewing the newest Fanatec gear. That would be the analogy. So I'm a nobody. The good part is that there have been quite a few people who have come across my videos because they have had these issues and the salt and the, you know, the bad taste left in their mouth by Fanatec that have found my videos and ha in the comment section have told me their stories and like, I sympathize with them because I was in their place. And it feels good to go ahead and be able to, you know, tell your story and have somebody sympathize with you. You know, for no other reason than to just get it off your chest. Really, that's what, I mean, quite honestly, besides getting tips, tricks, you know, 
um, how to's, maybe if you come up with a weird issue, you know, get a fix for it. That's what forums are really for, for people that have common interests to get together and talk and discuss things. And if you have a problem or an issue with the company, you can go ahead and voice your opinion. And you have other like-minded individuals that are there to listen. You know, some are douchebag trolls and will want to heckle you or troll you for whatever reason. And those are the type of people that you just ignore. And then you have other people that are truly sympathetic because either A, they are in, they have been in your shoes or understand, or just B, are human beings. <laughs> so in the grand scheme of things, I am a nobody in the sim YouTuber space, but I had that same issue. And this is where I found my outlet to voice my frustration. Will my voice ever get to Fanatec? No. You know, um... They'll never hear what I have to say. They'll never hear my uh, my gripes. You know, I'll never, you know, well, as of right now, it's, you know, I'm shouting into the wind. Hopefully, do I get to those levels where then my voice becomes one that's heard and, you know, acknowledged? I hope so. If you guys do your thing and like and sub, you know, I can get there. But as of right now, I'm not. And I'm one of the few that voiced the opinions. While some of the bigger YouTubers were quiet. And we know the ones that were quiet because they're the ones that dropped the reviews today on the DD Extreme uh, bundle. And I'm going to say I'm really disappointed. Um, I can understand why they were quiet. So... This YouTube thing for me is a hobby for right now. Um, it's an expensive hobby because it's my money that I'm dropping. Like my hard-earned money that I use to purchase all of this gear. And thank God I have a wonderful, loving, caring wife. Shout out to Mrs. Bag. I love you. Who supports my hobbies the same way I support her hobbies so she supports me I'm also in a position that I can do this so this for me is starting as a hobby it's something that I would love to grow into something that becomes a big thing for me I would love where this would transition from hobby to this is what I do you know I am Vested in the sim race community. I truly do enjoy sim racing and not necessarily the online play competitiveness of it. I just enjoy being in sim and going against AI where I just kind of turn off my brain to the outside world and whatever's happening and get, you know, immersed into the racing. You know, the adrenaline of. You know, coming up close to the back of another car and, you know, those brakes are kicking, but I'm right there. Like, I'm getting a good run out of, you know, I get a good run into the turn and into the corner and I'm getting a great run out of that corner and I'm passing my opponent. You know, those moments, and I have quite a few of those moments in this race here. I love this race. This race was great. That's exhilarating. It's fun. This is why I do it. I'm not doing it, you know, to be the best online, to, to beat other people online. That's not it. You know, I do this for myself. I play against myself and the AI. You know, I try to, if I'm running hot laps and, you know, I I get a certain time, I'm now trying to beat that time. I'm trying to improve myself. You know, and this is what sim racing does. I, you know, my I have quite a few hobbies where, you know, they are solitary, reflective type hobbies. Um, I like to detail cars and I take that time when I'm detailing my car, when I'm detailing a friend's car, if I'm detailing a customer's car, you know, where I am reflecting in that time and I take that nice quiet time to myself and I concentrate, you know, I'm, you know, cleaning and protecting certain aspects of the vehicle. You know, I'm there taking my time on the carpets, on the dash, you know, it's nice quiet time to myself where I'm doing the things and I have my processes. Um, I'm into, I mean, I, I guess I could say it on YouTube. Hopefully I don't know I one can't get demonetized or, you know, but I'm into the shooting sports. 
Um, so I like spending time at the range. Um, I like putting together my own firearms, you know. Uh, I build them, I tinker with them, I improve them, you know. These are solitary times where I'm going ahead and I'm doing these things, you know, for myself. And I'll go to the range and, you know, I'll set up my targets. And I take that time as a me time to reflect and, you know, not think of, you know, life and all the bullshit that comes along with it. It's me there with the target and I'm trying to improve myself. You know, the same with cars and motorcycles, you know, the things that I like to tinker with, improve. You know, we kind of, what I noticed is we all kind of have, we, we sh have these overlapping hobby circles. And, you know, so that's what sim racing is to me. So this YouTube is just another aspect of that where uh, for me it's a hobby and I would like to build it into something, you know, bigger. Something that could support me, you know, or support my family, you know, where I am giving my opinion on items that I feel are worth it. You know, the people like me who are like minded to me might want that extra opinion or they may want to hear something vocalized or maybe there's something that they missed. So in my video, they'll seem like, oh, you know, I didn't think about that. Or, you know, they're like, oh, I kind of want something, you know, and I'm looking for something that kind of ticks these boxes and they come across my video, you know, for like the PXN direct drive wheelbase that is playstation and xbox compatible and not something they may have even thought of why because pxn isn't a known brand of states you know it's like moza it's a chinese brand you know that has that stigma attached to it but maybe they don't want to drop the 700 dollars on a fanatec gtdd pro and they want to maybe spend 500 dollars where that's a little bit more reasonable and that's the area where the pxn lives you know, so these are the things that I want to bring to the community. You know, I'll give them my opinion. And like I always say, everyone is growing and I'm never going to tell you, oh, you should go buy this. But I'm going to tell you, hey, you know what? I found this product or this product reached out to me or, you know, I'm telling you about this because I think it's interesting and cool. And if it's something that you're thinking about, maybe you should consider it also, you know, or look at it. Watch my video, watch other videos, and make up your mind about it. So because it's a hobby for me, I can understand why some of the bigger YouTubers kept their mouth shut about the Fanatec issues because they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them. They got the GTD, they got the DD Extreme bundles weeks to months ago. Weeks to months ago is when the whole debacle happened. So of course they're not gonna bad mouth the company that's sending them free stuff to review. And while I'm not going to say that their reviews are biased, they're probably not. You know, are they as critical as they could be? I'm, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say they are. But at the same time, they don't want to be outspoken about certain subjects. And they want to be measured in their responses because this is how they make their livelihood. And I can understand that. I can respect that but i'm greatly disappointed that they decided that in this case with the overwhelming calls online from customers about what was happening that they kept their mouths rather closed until close to release time you know maybe it's coincidental that when they finally decided to say anything is when they were releasing the new bundle it's possible I'm still rather disappointed. Um, I'll never have... Well, you know, I won't say never. I, and that's what I'm working toward. You know, to having those numbers, to have that platform. But what I can easily say is that with that platform, with this platform, and growing that platform to where some of them are, so, 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 well, well, to where some of they are, I will stay exactly the same. And if I think your shit is shit, I'm going to tell you. And if that ends up becoming a detriment to me in the future where, you know, a company will decide, hey, maybe we don't want to work with him because he'll call us out on our bullshit. Oh, well, so be it. If you're pulling bullshit that you need to be called out for, I may not want to even work with you, you know. So think about that. You know, I can honestly say that 
so far in my time here in the YouTube space doing this, I've worked with some good companies. And you can go ahead and you may completely disagree with me, and that's fine. You can have your opinion. My, my opinion and my experience has been different than yours. So this is why I'm saying this. I've worked with PXN. They've been great to work with. Their product, I actually like. Their product, I actually use. Yes, there are people that have had bad experiences, but that's period with everything. Basically, electronics sometimes is a crapshoot. Depending on the company is whether or not you have better quality control and you have less issues as opposed to some other companies that have lower quality control and have more issues. But for the most part, electronics, you can buy uh, RX 4090 from NVIDIA and get a dud. Totally possible. You can buy a motherboard from Asus, you know, some hot ROG nastiness and get a dud. It's happened plenty of times. You can get a direct drive base and that one particular one, the quality control may not have been up to par and it suffered an issue. You know, at that point, you go ahead and deal with the company. Now, if the company's giving you a hard time with it, yes, voice your opinion, you know, voice your experience, you know, that's good for other people to then take that into account whether or not they want to continue forward with that you know if you're seeing a majority of people complaining over something in quality control as opposed to the people that are you know praising it <clears throat> then you take that into account and whether or not you feel like you're that lucky one that might get the good one or it's just bad and you're going to get shafted when it comes to the way of pxn just not a lot of people have reviewed them uh the people that do have in my experience have been positive um the negative experiences have been with their lower quality stuff so like the v10 the v their new v99 which is pretty much i think just a rebranded v10 the v9 they're cheap shit pxn purchased mad cats as ip so all of their cheaper wheels just consider them like mad cats wheels i wouldn't touch them but their direct drive wheel is actually good i've used it it's good I've gotten reviews, you know, or I've gotten uh, comments on my videos from people. Oh, I bought it and, you know, it's great. And they've had some small issues like, oh, how do I pair it? Well, you've got to read the manual, watch the video like I did ahead of time, and you'll figure out some small stuff, you know. Oh, how do I get this to work? How do I get that to work? I just redirect them to it. I did this in a video, you know, check it out. Or they have a video, you know, check that out. Small little things that sometimes people overlook just because they're in a hurry to play with their new toy. That's fine, you know. The issue that I have with my PXM base and the disconnect issues with the PlayStation 5, well, the one disconnect issue I had, they solved, they sent me a new wheelbase. They were like, what happened? This is what it was. I explained it. They were like, okay, you know, give me your old order number. We'll get your info pulled up. And we're going to send you a new wheelbase. That was it. Um, I had a disconnect issue with the PlayStation 5, and I back and forth with them letting them know what's happening it was a known issue and they were like okay for right now we're gonna send you a new dongle the, the dongle that connects to the ps5 you know let us know i've been a little bit behind on that one because i've done so many other reviews but they just went ahead and sent me the dongle um camus camus is another company that has been amazing they have been they've been good to work with except for the whole pedal issue with the c5 where you know there may have been something that was lost in the communications, you know, when I was talking to them. But they did send me out the C5. And after some initial issues with the C5 and, you know, updates to the, uh, to the program, to their software, and firmware updates to the wheel, the wheel has been great, as I've called it in other videos. It's now boringly reliable where i just turn it on and it works exactly the way i expect it to it's now become kind of boring it's like oh there's no problem and there's no issue it's just working oh i don't have anything to figure out now like oh i can just go right into the sim and go race i don't have to worry about an issue that's kind of boring you know sometimes i kind of like problems <laughs> um the moza i haven't had an issue with my moza at all some people have had issues. Some people have put more time in it and they've seen those issues. I haven't put that much time into it, but the time I have put into it, reviewing, it has been great. You know, 
it's a good inexpensive wheelbase i'm not happy with the es wheel the es wheel feels a little cheap but you know they made up for that with the ks wheel that's 280 bucks you know a hey, simicube now has i think or is it sim magic i think it's sim magic has that new neo wheel that's kind of the same price range if anybody knows anybody has some magic hey i wouldn't mind reviewing that wheel i don't know if i want to kick out 280 dollars right now but you know whatever so you know all these things for the most part other than the camus which i've mentioned camus sent it to me they worked with me they took a chance on a nobody youtuber to make videos and you know it's been great um all this stuff i've paid for out of my pocket because it's been a hobby and it's something that i want to grow into something but in this situation, I'm being vocal about Fanatec and their shortcomings and these bigger YouTubers that have that platform that can be vocal and can get some changes done. I really feel like they could. We're quiet. They were quiet and now a new product dropped and they're doing review videos and like everything's all hunky dory. A little disappointing. I don't want to end this video because I'm sure this video has already been long as hell on a sad, disappointing note like that. Um, I will say that this nobody YouTuber does appreciate all 366 of you that have subbed. I do greatly appreciate all the time that you guys take in watching my videos and commenting on my videos. Um, it, I mean, when I look at my analytics, thousands of you are watching. 90% of you don't sub. I wish you would. It, it really would make a difference. Um, you know, hitting the like is great and phenomenal. That helps. But subbing also, you know, some people want to say, oh, subbing doesn't do anything. In this space, it does. It shows that I have an audience, that I have a platform that I'm building. And that kind of goes a long way into building the bags brand the joey bags brand and you know being able and having that opportunity to get more hardware when i don't have to shell out all the money for so my wife doesn't kill me um you know where i can get hardware that i think is interesting for you guys as well you know for myself and what i would imagine for you guys review it in a completely unbiased way so that way you have that extra info to see if that's something you want to you know do um, like I, I mentioned before, I did set up the Patreon, but I never put the link in like I say I'm going to just because, I don't know, it feels weird. Um, but if you search Patreon, maybe I'll do it on this one. If you search Patreon Joey Bags, I'm sure you'll come about. I mean, I really set that up just so that I can have uh, another way of, you know, having some support because this hobby is expensive, as we all know. Not as expensive as some of my other hobbies, but this one's kind of expensive. <laughs> And, you know, just really a way of upsetting that, you know, uh, offsetting the course, the the cost, you know, like that Turtle Beach bundle, that Turtle Beach direct drive is coming out. I kind of want to get that. I got to figure that one out. And the DD Extreme bundle, I said I'd never buy anything from Fanatec again, but I guess if, the, if it was a donation, you know, it doesn't quite count as me buying it. So I, I'll do some mental gymnastics on that one. But either way, your subs and your likes mean more to me than donations to the patreon you know growing the brand growing the sub count means way more to me that that gives me a little bit more street cred so um for all of you that watch i thank you very very much i greatly appreciate it and i'm honored um for those that have subbed even more and as usual smash that like button i just like saying that smash that like button smash that sub button please please really helps me grow and you know get my foot in and helps um amplify my voice that's just a way of amplifying your voices um hit the notification bell so at least that way you know when i'm dropping videos and it's not a surprise to you but like oh shit joey bags dropped another video well, you know what shit is he talking about fanatech today <laughs> And with that, let me grab my keyboard here. So with that, I'm going to tell you guys, thank you very much. I appreciate you all. For all my viewers all over the world, from Japan 
Russia, South America. Um, let's see, specifically in South America. I think I saw Brazil in there. Um, France, the UK. Uh, I mean, so many different places. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, and with that, I'll check you out on the next video. Peace.